Hi, I'm Danae Jones from City Live TV and I'm here today with WGC lawyers Jazz Ojla and we're talking about financial separation. Now Jazz, are there any time limits that de facto's or married couples have before they finalise their property settlements? Uh, absolutely Danae. Um, with married couples and de facto's, they ha each have different time limitations. Unless they have come to a, their own, I guess, property settlement beforehand, a married couple will have a time period of which they have to apply to the, the courts of 12 months after they've finalised their divorce and a de facto will have two years after the date they separated. And it's important to note that for married couples, they can only get a divorce after they've been separated for 12 months. So Jazz, how do you formalise a property settlement? Danae, there's two ways that you can formalise a property settlement. Before I go into those, um, some, I may as well give you an example that sometimes a husband and wife will come in and they'll bring in an envelope or a back of an envelope and they'll have the terms and conditions of what you know, the husband and wife have come to and they'll say, Jazz, this is binding. I'm pretty sure it is, but I just wanted you to check that this is okay. Um, unfortunately, it's not okay because that's not how you formalise um, property settlements. The two ways to formalise it um, is one is by way of a financial agreement. Um, sometimes they're referred to as binding financial agreements. Um, with financial agreements, they don't need the court's intervention. The other way to go ahead and sort out the property settlement is by an application for consent orders to the court, whereby the court must be satisfied that the property settlement is fair and just. So I believe there's a process that people go through and it's called the four-step process? Yeah, look, there's, a, there's what us lawyers commonly refer to as the four-step process. Um, this is the process in which a court um, assesses the property settlement and that of course has an impact on you know, if, if the property settlement is adjusted in favour of one person or the other. So step number one is identifying and valuing the asset pool. So looking at someone's example, superannuation, bank balances, properties that they've bought. Um, so that's step number one. Mm -hmm. Step number two is to look at the party's contributions. And this can be broken up into three categories. So category number one is the financial contribution that each party makes to the property pool. Number two is the non-financial contributions that a party makes to that property pool. And number three, is what we call the homemaker or the parent, you know, the, looking after the welfare of the family. So that's step number two. Step number three is looking at future needs of those parties. For example, you might have someone who's 70 years of age and not able to obtain or gain employment. Or you might have someone who's got a terrible disease, for example. So the courts will assess the future needs of that individual and obviously make um, decisions about how, how much of the property pool they need. And the last step, I guess, is looking at what's fair. So the courts have the discretion to look at the property settlement and see if it's deemed to be fair or if it's not fair at all. So financial separation is a very stressful and emotional time for anyone and we've all known people or been through it ourselves. What advice or tips have you got to people that are listening out there? Danae, as you've just said, look, it is a very stressful time in one's life. Probably one of the most stressful periods that anyone can ever go through in their lifetime. I often say to my clients, Danae, that I know you're going through a tough time and I know it's very stressful, but that's why I'm here. I'm here to alleviate that stress and to get them a good outcome. That's great advice. Thanks, Jazz. Appreciate you joining us. Thank you, Danae. Thanks for tuning in. If you'd like more information about financial separation, you can find it on our website, citylifemedia.com.au or feel free to reach out to Jazz and the experience team at WGC Lawyers.